When working on an application, we often need to transfer data from point A to point B. Now point A and B can be many things. It can be a browser request, it can be an API request and so on. How to structure and model this data is what we'll be learning in this lesson and in the next one. We'll talk about something called DTOs which stands for data transfer objects in this lesson and in the next one we'll talk about something called VOs which stands for value objects. So what is DTO? DTO or data transfer object formally is just an object that carries data between processes. It is exactly as it sounds like. It's data transfer object. It's meant to model the data in an object form to be transferred around as an object instead of some random or magical array. DTOs help structure the data that may be coming from different places. It can be coming from a browser request, it can be coming from an API request, and so on. So DTOs can be used to structure both request and response data. Let's see one example of where DTOs can be useful to better understand what it is and how it works. We worked with API in the last lesson where we made basic API requests to multiple APIs to validate email. So let's use that and let's stick with the API to showcase an example of where DTO can be useful. As you remember, we have this curl controller here which calls the verify method to verify email on an email validation interface. And then we implemented this interface in two email validation services. One was emailable and the other one abstract API. In the app.p we are binding the interface to the emailable email validation service and then I have this commented out so that we can easily swap out the implementation and instead of emailable you use abstract API. So let's open both of these classes and let's also open the browser. Let's visit HTTP localhost port 8000 slash curl and this is the response we get from the emailable verify method. Now what I'm going to do is that we're going to go back to the code and we're going to comment this out and uncomment the abstract API and I'm going to open the same page in another tab so that we can see the difference between the responses. So as you can already see, while the response might look somewhat similar as far as the values goes, the structure of the response is different. For example, this one is called deliverability and in the emailable API response, it's called state. Same goes with the score. This is called score here, but in the abstract API, it's called quality score. So you can already see the problem here. We have two different APIs which return two differently structured data. We're simply dumping out the result here in the controller but what if we were using the response data somewhere deep in the application we would essentially need to access some magical array keys for example let's say that we wanted to access the score and whether the email is deliverable or not so to assign these two values we need to access them using arrays and let's say that we were using abstract api at first we would be accessing them using quality score and we would be using this whether it's deliverable or not now before doing the print r we'll simply do var dump score and is deliverable if we open the browser refresh the page we see that we get the score and we get the boolean value whether it's deliverable or not now let's say that we were using this somewhere deep in our application and in multiple places we might not be using this directly in the controller like this we might be using it in three or four different places in the application we would be accessing the quality score and the deliverability this way so for the sake of this example we'll just assume that we are using these in multiple places somewhere in our application we're just going to dump the results out in this controller for this example but let's say that down the road we decided to switch the service and we wanted to use emailable instead of abstract api we would go in here uncomment that out and comment this one out and now we will use emailable service now this is not the only example you could be using some kind of factory class to get the proper instance of the email validation service as i mentioned in the last lesson you might have some kind of fallback logic where you're using both apis at the same time you could encapsulate all that logic in the factory class which would be responsible for creating a new instance of the proper email validation service class. But for the sake of this example, we'll just simulate that using container to kind of swap the implementations. So once we've changed to emailable service and we refresh the page, you see that we get warning undefined array key, quality score, 
and deliverability. And that's expected because emailable, as you saw before, has the data structured different way. So we are kind of forced to build some kind of ugly if else statement here to check if this is set, then use it. If not, try to get the value from the emailable structure and so on. Thanks to null coalescing operator, we could avoid if else checks and just do it, you know, this way, like result score but again this is ugly and it's not the right way to do it because we're still accessing some magical keys on a race that may or may not exist in future wouldn't it be better if we were working with objects instead of arrays here instead of returning some mysterious array from the verify method we could return an object whose structure is known so instead of accessing it this way what if we could do something like this score and is deliverable now we would go to the verify method on the interface and instead of type hinting it to an array as the return type we will type hint it to return some sort of email validation result dto object let's create this class within its own namespace we'll create a new namespace called dto and within the constructor we'll accept some common arguments for our example, we only really care about the score and whether it's deliverable or not. So we can accept just those two arguments in the constructor. If we needed some more information, we could, you know, build our DTO as needed. But for this example, we only care for two properties from the API responses. So we'll model the DTO around that. So we can create those two properties and accept the arguments within the constructor. So we'll set them to public string score and public boolean is deliverable. And one of the major benefits of using DTOs is that everything can be type hinted like this. We'll make both of these read only because DTOs typically are immutable, which means that once these are created, the value should never change afterwards. If for whatever reason you need to change the value, then you should just create a new object of that DTO class. And this pretty much is it. DTOs don't really have any business logic in it. It's just a dummy class with some properties and its only purpose is to transfer data. Now we'll take this and return that instead of returning array from the API services. So we'll change this type hint to email validation service. And instead of returning an array, we'll assign this to a variable called body. And then we'll simply return a new object of that DTO. And within the constructor, we can simply pass in the proper values from the emailable API. So we need to access it using score and we need to access it using state. Now this here doesn't have to be hard coded. We could create an enum class if we wanted to, but we'll keep it as is for now. Now you might be asking, we're still accessing these magical keys. And the answer to that is yes, we're still accessing these keys, but we are within the emailable API class. And we know what the structure of that API is is we are not accessing these magical array keys outside of this class now we'll go and do the same thing in the abstract api so we'll return a new email validation result and we'll assign this to body but the difference now is that instead of accessing it this way we can access it using abstract api structure and the abstract api structure was quality score and instead of state it was deliverability and the value was all uppercase deliverable. Let's change the return type here as well. And this should be good enough. So let's open the browser and test this out. We'll refresh the page and we're getting a fatal error that the argument one score must be of type string, but int was given instead. And that makes sense because within the emailable here, this right here is an integer and we've type hinted it to be string. So let's actually change this to be integer instead of string. Let's refresh the page. And sure enough, we're getting no more error and we're getting a proper result. Now let's change the API from emailable to abstract API and see if it still works. Let's comment this out and uncomment the abstract API. Let's refresh the page and we're getting another type error that instead of int, the string was given. And this is another issue that we could face if we were accessing these keys all over our application because one API returns it as integer, the other API returns it as string. Let's do a quick var dump here of the body so that we can see what the score is set to. Let's add some exit statement here. Let's refresh the page. And quality score, as you can see, is string, 
and in addition to being a string it's a value between 0 and 1 it's like a percent value it's not a whole number it's a decimal value while the value returned from the emailable is a whole number between 0 and 100 so to stay consistent we either need to convert the value returned from emailable to be decimal like this and be either string or float or we need to convert this into a whole number and cast it to integer. We'll do it this way, we'll multiply this by 100 and cast it to integer. So we'll go back here and we'll simply multiply this by 100 and we'll cast it to integer. Let's refresh the page and sure enough the error is gone and we're getting a proper score value and the proper boolean value whether the email is deliverable or not. Now let's switch back to emailable to make sure that everything is still working. So let's comment this out, uncomment this, let's refresh the page and as you can see everything is still working and no more errors. So basically now that we're using DTOs and objects we know exactly what is being returned from the verify method regardless of which API service we use. If we were to add another API, if it were to implement this interface, we would know that the verify method would still return an object of email validation result, and we would know the exact structure of that object. That's why we are able to simply access them this way instead of accessing some magical array keys. So in a nutshell, this is what DTO is. It's just a wrapper around some data to model it properly without much logic in it. You can think of it as just some dumb class whose only purpose is to transfer data from point A to point B. Note that DTO can be applied to other things and not just API responses. We could use DTOs for request parameters, for parameters, filters, and so on. Also note that this is not the only way to construct DTOs. There are different ways you can construct this and it mostly comes down to preference. You can have some static methods to construct DTOs from an array. So instead of instantiating the object directly, you can create a DTO from a given array. You could also create a DTO from another object and so on. Alternatively, you could also have a dedicated DTO factory class that would build the DTO objects from request, array, and so on. This way you're not bringing the request object dependency into your DTO class. Now this does not mean that you should use DTO for everything. If you notice that you're sending the same array to multiple methods and need to transfer the same data between multiple classes, then DTO might be a good idea. So for example, if you had something like array params and you were using this method in multiple places, then this might be a good candidate to use DTO instead. So this is it for this video. In the next one, we'll talk about something called value objects and the differences between entities, DTOs, and value objects. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my content, please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I'll see you in the next video.